how many people are saying it's too black. I wanted to use DIY because yeah, that is not howl, hollow. We are working on some primitive fall decor, decor that you can keep out for spooky season or you can go into Thanksgiving or until you're ready to do some of your Christmas decor. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed today's video. It does kind of have a primitive folk art vibe. So I hope that you're into that. If not, just stay watching and just enjoy my content. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Yvonne and I am a secondhand thrifter. I love to go hunting for treasures. And sometimes you have to buy some new items to go along with your thrifted items to make them into beautiful home decor. So I'm kind of mashing the two together to give you some ideas of what to look for when you're out there in the wild hunting, looking for secondhand finds, or if you're at Hobby Lobby or searching some scrapbooking um, crafting sites, looking for ideas of something new to this make. old strainer? <laughs> I don't know. I love the rusty crustiness, and I think I can do the same thing. I think I can put a shelf in this and be able to put some decor. Um, it's got holes, so it should be able to hang without having to have a wire. We'll bring it over and I'll check it out. I have a little... <laughs> so, yep, it does hang, so I don't have to put any wires in it, and it looks like it's level. So we should be good to go, and we just need to get a piece of pallet wood to put a shelf in there. So when I'm matching up wood, I want it to be recessed a little bit to sit back. Not wider than where I'm putting it in. I like it. I like pallet wood because it's all beat up. It has nails in it. So I'm just getting off any of the dangerous parts that might cause some, sl <laughs> some slivers. Okay, so let's see. I want that. So same thing, you just push it down, just push it down till it's tight. So for this one, I'm going to do like a primitive, like crows kind of go, crows kind of go with Halloween, spooky season, all year primitive decor, fall, whatever, however you, whatever you think. Um, but to add this in, I mean, I don't want to like lower the shelf anymore because then you're not going to get very much on it. But I think he's too tall. Um, so I'm going to cut it down to about that level and see where he is using the bandsaw. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So... And I knew that little piece was going to kick off at me at any time. But yes, yeah, so like right there, now that's a much better height. It's okay if it's sticking out a little bit. Got some black pumpkins that I picked up randomly. I probably thrifted them. Um, and I might go with a smaller um, model brush tree. You just have to play, you know, kind of like that sets of three, the tiered area. Because I do like the color of this. <laughs> this vase with, they're so foamy, they just fall. So let me try one of the smaller ones in here. Maybe I don't even want a tree. Maybe I just want to add. How many people are saying it's too black? <laughs> There's too much darkness going on here. Okay. <laughs> I have so many pumpkins I picked up. We can do orange. I totally can do orange. And they they have like that paper on them. I don't know if they're the ones that were on stems or not. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be something or not. <laughs> uh. 
It's all about playing, y'all, until you get where you like it. Is that getting better or worse? Better or worse? <laughs> right? We're now at the doctor, the eye doctor's office. Better or worse? <laughs> oh. I do like the sign behind here. So I took off the wire and then I put some of the alien tape behind there. And I do like the concept um, because I need to keep this screw hole free so that's where somebody would hang it. I'm going to go as high up as I can go, as I can go to the screw hole. And then put the shelf back in. It's okay that it hangs underneath. get my just because I had to cut this off oh. go ahead and hot tape it on it though I had it in the wrong space that I didn't want I'll have to wait till that glue dries and then get it off instead of adding a pumpkin up here I have some I picked up some black spools of thread Keeping with that little primitive vibe going on there. And then I can put, well, actually, that one make it, should sit on the side because it's the same height. And then below, we can put a little, some little pumpkins down decide which way they should go. I'm hot gluing those on. I think I'm going to off-center that one just a little bit because I wanted to make those bigger pumpkins work. They just, they weren't working because you just can't um, you just can't. They're too big. The angle's too weird. So I'm going to go ahead and put those down there. And then I'm going to stick <laughs> stick some of this. This is some of the baby's breath from Hobby Lobby. Stick them in there, and then we could do this, this, and then this. So one of my hot sellers right now are checkerboards. So I just look for old cutting board pieces, old pieces of wood. They're already shaped, they're already cut. Yes, it does have oils on it, but that's okay. Um, we'll clean it as best as we can. You can sand it. But the thing about it is you want those imperfections. You want this, I do anyway, want this to look like it's an old timey board that's used. So if I make it perfect and have this perfect piece of wood, it doesn't have that old timey vibe to it. Or I'm going to have to put a lot of work into it. So an old cutting board is perfect for this type of DIY. So I'm just going to clean it just a little bit. I'm not going to sand the cut marks out. I think those are character. We'll see if this is even dirty. It just has that like butcher block, maybe oil on it or oils from food or whatnot. 
but it does not have to be pristine. It's actually better if it's not pristine. So now that my board is dry, we're gonna go ahead and get it painted. And I'm looking for a yellow this time. So I'm gonna go with DIY's cake batter color. Now I'm kind of looking for a mustard, mustard type of color, which I know this is not, it's lighter, but how you finish it up can make it be a little bit darker with waxes and whatnot. So I, I really wanted a yellow color and this, I wanted to use DIY because then I can dry it with a heat gun <laughs> in between coats because I have to paint both sides. first coat's on, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to go ahead and dry that first coat. Now that I have my first cut coat dry, I'm going to go ahead and mist the paint back down. This is a clay-based paint, so it's kind of, it's, it's definitely thick, so this will just help you glide on that second coat to get it to adhere and not just lift up the paint. Now to do the checkerboard, I have this stencil that I ordered off of Amazon. I'm just going to eyeball centering it so that I have the same from each side. And then I'm just going to use some painter's tape to tape it down. For my Checkerboard color, I'm going to be using DIY's Little Black Dress. For my applicator, I'm just going to be using a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store. I just like the control that I have and the way I can hold it. And you don't want to have much paint on. So I'm going to press why I'm putting this on. I'm going to kind of hold my stencil down so it does not raise up. The nice thing about the little black dress and the clay base paint is it's so heavily pigmented that I don't necessarily have to go over my stencil twice, which is a blessing. If the tape pulls some paint off, even better. There we go. <laughs> and the nice thing about DIY paint is you just put this in soapy water and it comes right off. <laughs> Not as much scrubbing to now do. My next stencil, I want to add a crow to this. So I'm just going to try to eyeball where I think center is going to be. It's cardboardish. So it's a little bit on the thicker side. This stencil is perfect for distressing because it's so thick you that you really kind of have to push down to get into their little crevices. Okay, so now I'm going to be adding some lines. So first of all, I'm going to start taping right where the black checkerboard is, going past where the plank spot is. We're going to be framing in our checkerboard is what we're going to be doing. So I need to make a cut, cutting off that excess tape. And 
Now I'm going to take another piece of tape. I'm going to make just a wee bitty little line. This line I'm going to be using DIY's Summer Crush, which is an orange. So I'm kind of just going to dip it in there because it's not going to take a lot of paint. Go ahead and dry it before we move the tape. I do want to do one more color. Now on my next, I'm not going to have it go all the way to the crow or I'd be running over the crow's feet. And then for my next line, I'm going to use Bohemian Gold by Melange. Having that yellow on yellow kind of look. So I am going to do one more line and I'm going to do it in black around I didn't mean to make you guys watch as I was taping off yet again, which I forgot to tape area. <laughs> Whoops a daisy. Try that again. Before sanding or doing anything else to this, because DIY paint, if I start to wax it, I could start to remove my paint, which I don't want to do. I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with a matte sealer. So now I'm going to go ahead and sand it. I like all the little tape marks where they pulled off the tape. The fun thing about DIY is when you seal it in and stuff, it's not like this even finish. It really gives it that old timey look. So I'm just going to do a light 220 sanding just to distress it a little bit more. And I'm just going to go ahead and dust it off. I already love the old look that it's got going on. The chippy paint, the scratches from it being a cutting board, where the paint peeled off from the tape, sanding it, giving it the edges. But now we're going to take it to the next level and add some aging wax, which will give it that little bit of dirt, darken up that paint a little bit. Kind of tie the whole vibe in together. So get into like any cracks or crevices like dirt wood so it's not like a true mustard color but oh my <laughs> oh my what it what it does we got to do both sides project I have one of the carvable pumpkins meaning it's hollow inside and do you think 
in this shop studio, I could find a dry, drywall knife to be able to cut this. Nope, I have no idea where Chris is hitting them. I looked in all his drawers, and I'm sure he could tell me right where it was, but I cannot find it. So I'm going to use a carving knife <laughs> that we would carve our turkey with. I think it'll work, don't you? So I just picked this up. You know, they're all like 50, 60% off right now. I'm trying to, get, you know, get them sold while the season is in the season is in season. <laughs> so let's get carving this. Well, I have something I want to stick inside of this. So that's my whole point that I want to carve it. <laughs> oh, so, you know, use whatever tools you have. So I think it'll work. I think it's just styrofoam. I think. This might not be as hollow as I think it was supposed to be. Yes. So much for a carvable pumpkin. Hobby Lobby. <laughs> this does not feel hollow inside to me at all. That's okay. I will make it work without hurting myself, right? The pile. It might have been just me. So they're all lightweight. Okay, I needed a hole. That was my main goal. I needed a hole. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't the carvable pumpkin. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one or somebody put them in the box of carvable. You know, I, did, I just grabbed. But it's okay. I got the hole. I got a hole. I needed a hole. Um, probably probably better that it's filled with styrofoam because I put a crow <laughs> on the top of it. Um, but I have to cut off the base anyway to stick it in. So, yeah, there's that. That's okay. Um, yeah, so you know, sometimes projects are a little bit harder than they should be, but it wasn't too bad cutting styrofoam. Just styrofoam is like staticky and likes to stick to you. So I'm just going to come over here to the fan saw. wanted this part okay do it now does he fit in he does that there we go there we go that's what i want <laughs> that's what i wanted oh my goodness but i don't want this color this is too plastically too too new looking so we're going to go ahead and get it painted up so i'm going to go ahead and use some of the diy's um summer crush at least I got a hole to put my get my hand in here. Um, of course, it's plastic, but this clay base paint will stick to about anything. So just can't really dry it with a heat gun because it's plastic and you don't want to melt it. Blow dryer would work just fine. Okay, now that if that's dry, blow dryer works just fine. Don't have <laughs> as many hands to sh share with y'all. But same thing, it's going to need two coats to get it to completely cover. Now I need to seal this in before doing anything else. I love the color. Clear mat. Before putting this, before putting this all together, I'm going to be doing some decrepit dust with some clear wax to give it some nice primitive age look. So just some clear wax. And on the bottom, I'm just gonna kind of rub it on because I want a lot on the bottom of this. So now I'm gonna take some of the dust remembering to tap it off because a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. Sticking there. And then I take another dryer brush 
and then I can kind of rub, rub and blend and move in the wax around a little bit. Take another brush and then I'm going to go through the seams, like those little seams of the pumpkin. Not going too far ahead because it'll dry and soak in. And then I'm just going to start blending it in together. And since my paint decided that it's going to have dark spots, I'm going to add a different hue to the dark and decrepit is which is some cinnamon. And then the cinnamon smells really yummy. <laughs> now I'm going to seal it in again with some of the clear coat and the matte finish. Okay, now I need to get my crow glued in there. So I'm just going to use a whole bunch of hot glue, which will probably melt the styrofoam. <laughs> I said a whole bunch. I wanted to be able to glue it inside of it because I didn't want it to be top heavy. Like if I glued it on the top of this, it might have been like top heavy. And that's what I was trying to avoid. Fill that space up with some of the Spanish moss, the really brown kind. Just pushing it right in there nice and tight. This stuff is wonderful, but it's also so messy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give it a little haircut. The pieces that are sticking out where I don't want them to stick out. I'm going to add some more dried flowers. I don't even know what these are. <laughs> they came in an auction lot, but I love them. And I think they'll just add some more texture to the top of this. We'll have to hot glue them in. Now that I have the dried flowers on, I'm going to add some of these little fakey ones. I think just the heads, though, just to help lay the grass down. Just bring another little element in. You know, you keep working on a project till you love it. I like the idea of three elements in here. Yeah, I think that's what it needed. It needed some florals. I always love the thought that crows will steal stuff and bring it to you. <laughs> so I want to add some Rusty Krusty stars. Um, this key might be a little too big. I might have to find a smaller one, but I really thought that I would like to add some of those elements in. Because it is funny that crows do okay, so I have my little cup of keys here. Um, that first one was way too big, so I'm going to use a smaller piece. But I think I'm just going to tie it with some twine.
We definitely do have plenty of keys to spare in our shop, that's for sure. So why not add another one? And then maybe just a few pieces of dried baby breath just to add some lightness to the piece. And putting a couple stars on the other side. Of course, I was looking all over for my raffia. <laughs> yeah. So I had to use my dew twine. Ah, see how that, and then I get my baby's breath in there, ma. That's how that works. That's what I really wanted to add into the keys for some lightness on them. And then maybe one more little guy. I have a few little watch faces when we're talking about <laughs> crow stealing stuff that I'm just going to add in just like a little like hey what is that in that arrangement about making an old crow tag but I decided no that's people do that all the time but I do have these little aged letter numbers and I'm going to put add on lucky number seven <laughs> So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think you know i like primitive i like crows i think they're definitely into the fall time of year and they are folk art they are classic they have been around for a long time so why not do a little decorating with them that can go into your everyday decor not always have doesn't always have to be like for the season um chalkboard's doing wonderful that little you know, coming up with an idea to use for that little sh shaker, the strainer, <laughs> the metal. I wasn't really sure what that was called, but I love the little vibe that it has going on. And then the pumpkin that I thought was going to be empty, but that's okay because the Godwink moment, I was going to have to fill it up to put the crow in there anyway. And then I could have done the same old, same old, just did the grass, did the old crow, but I'm like, I want to, I want him to look like. He's been, you know, because crows, for some reason, I guess they like to take things. Ravens, crows, I'm not sure which is the difference, something with the tail. <laughs> but I know that they like to bring people treasures. So the thought of having the stars and the keys and the little watch faces, I think is a little gift to us all. So thanks so much for watching today's video. And as always, give me a quick comment down which the items I made and made over today were your favorites. Have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way? So again, thank you for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this kind of content for the first time and you liked what you saw, secondhand makeovers is your vibe, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.